This session has been designed to boost your confidence in being able to talk to our children and young people about their mental health and offer some signposting information around what local services are available. We're also going to be offering some practical hints and tips for you to take away with you. Now, it is really, really important that this session is not about diagnosis um, or about specific mental health conditions, although we will be introducing you to some of the services that will be able to support you with that during the session. Now, I know, <clears throat> excuse me, I know it can often feel daunting to talk to a child or a young person about their mental health, and that many people have told us that they worry that they'll get it wrong or maybe make it worse. Um, but I really hope that by the end of the session that we're all feeling more confident in being able to start those conversations and that we've been able to signpost you to some of the amazing local services that you might not have known of before that support our children and young people in Froome. So we will be opening up the Q&A board that you'll see at the bottom of the screen for questions. Kate's going to be monitoring these and I hope to come uh, back to some of those questions at the end. Um, but know that we'll also be sending a summary of all of the session to all of the participants that have signed up. But I am really hopeful that by the end of the session, we might be able to answer all of the questions that you have. It's also important to note that we have also published all the information you'll hear about today on our website, um, and we'll send you the direct link to that after the session as well. Now, you know, I should have probably introduced myself. Uh, my name is Melody Hunter Evans, and I'm one of the Children and Young People's Project Officers for Froon Town Council. But I'm also a parent of two children, one of whom has been through the system to get extra support around her mental health. So this subject is really close to my heart, and it is an absolute pleasure to be with you today. Um, ben, would you also like to introduce yourself? Hi, um, I'm Ben O'Shea, so I'm a wellbeing practitioner and I work for a charity called Young Somerset. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I did this earlier and I realised my video explains a lot about what I do. But um, I'm, yeah, I'm Froome born and bred, so I'm a local resident of Froome, lived here all my life. Um, and I've worked in and around education with Froome for the past 15 years. So, um, but yes, now I'm a wellbeing practitioner. Um, my role will, will become a bit clearer later on, I think, when my video gets shown. Um, which will make me cringe as well at that point. So anyway, that's me. Thank you. Amazing, Ben. Thank you. That's perfect. Um, OK, so why is it so important to start these conversations with our children and young people about mental health? Well, the pandemic has highlighted that more than ever, we need to start open and honest conversations about mental health with our children and young people. The earlier we set up a safe space for them to talk to you about how they're feeling, what they might be worrying about, or their hopes for the future, the better. Okay, so the first part of the session today, we're going to be introducing you to a number of different organisations that can support children, young people and free. Each service has really kindly provided us with a video talking about their service and the best ways to access it. Now, as I said before, and I'll probably say again during the session, we will be sending you recordings of the training today, as well as all the links to the services included. So please don't worry about making notes. Um, and we also have them available on our webpage afterwards um, so that you can watch the individual uh, video clips or watch it all back if you wanted to. So would it be possible to get our slides up? Amazing. Perfect. Okay, so our first slide then, if we can have the first one up. Amazing. Okay, fantastic. So the first one um, that we're introducing you today is from Mind in Somerset. Um, they run the Mind Line, which is a 24-7 mental health support phone line where trained workers can support you in the moment, um, but also signpost and help you access the right local services. Um, here is one of their youth workers to tell you a little bit more about them and the other things that they also offer across Somerset. Hello, my name is Victoria from Mind in Somerset. Our youth service recognises that it isn't always easy for people to talk about their emotional and mental well-being. Fear of what others may say, being laughed at or judged can often stop them and make them feel alone or isolated. We believe that everyone has their own challenges at some time and therefore will need different mechanisms of support and ways to help them cope with these challenging times. Every person that comes into contact with a young person has the ability to impact on his or her mental health and well-being. Our staff and volunteers have a wealth of experience and are able to offer positive role models to the young people that work with us. We have a range of different services, from walking and talking groups, a listening service, RAW, a suicide bereavement support service, and youth peer support groups. There are ways to help every young person overcome their challenges in practical, 
safe and supportive environments that tailored to fit their own needs and their own time frame, help at a pace that suits them and in a way that works for the whole family. There is also Mindline, our 24-7 emotional support service that is available on 01823 276 892. Anyone who needs emotional support, information or referrals can access this service 24-7 and our trained staff and volunteers are there to listen and support. If you would like to be referred into the Mind and Somerset Youth Service, please either call Mindline or visit our website www.mindinsomerset.org.uk. Here there is a full list of our services, information, emails to contact for support, as well as an online referral form to refer directly into our services. Thank you. Amazing. That, that's great. If I can have the next slide then. Perfect. Okay, so you know the Ben's with us from Young Somerset Wellbeing Team anyway, um, but here is him on a video clip going into a little bit about more detail about what Young Somerset have to offer locally. Hi, my name is Ben O'Shea and I work for Young Somerset as a wellbeing practitioner. Um, Young Somerset is a charity based within Somerset that provides support for children and young people. We have lots of different areas that we support in. So we have our targeted youth work, we have our skills development service, our music project and our community wellbeing service, which I am a part of. So. Um, yeah, so I'm a qualified wellbeing practitioner. Now, what that means is that I work with children and young people within Somerset um, to support them with early presentations of mental health issues such as anxiety or low mood. Um, I deliver that work in the form of cognitive behaviour therapy or CBT for short. Um, and it's a really structured and targeted form of therapy which helps to provide young people with the skills and tools to be able to deal with things like anxiety and low mood themselves. Um, typically it lasts between six and eight sessions um, and yeah like I say we, pro we provide young people with the skills and tools to be able to cope with anxiety better themselves. So it's not a strictly traditional form of therapy in terms of talking and counselling. It's really not like that. It's very much, like I say, targeted strategic work to help young people find ways to deal with, with mental health issues themselves better. Um, Yes, so it's a really exciting organisation to work for and, and I love the work that I do and it's it's a very new role that was created through um, the education department and the NHS um, to address the, the mental health crisis with children and young people nowadays. So it's very exciting that these things are, are beginning and starting to become more clear in society. Um, I work solely out of room at the moment, which is a recent um, kind of yeah role change for me. I previously worked all across the county, but um, I'm yeah specifically working out of room now to help with community partners and the schools within room. So. I work um, currently with Oakfield and Froom College, um, doing a drop-in service there and working directly with some of the young people and parents of those schools. Um, the plan is for the future for me to kind of become more able and in, in more visible within Froom and provide a greater range of support. So it's very exciting times and yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a positive thing moving forward. So. I guess that's pretty much it for a really quick summary of what I do. But if you would like to find out more about our wellbeing service or any of the other arms of Young Somerset, go to www.youngsomerset.org.uk. Or if you have specific inquiries about the wellbeing service, send an email through to our email, which is wellbeing at youngsomerset.org.uk. Um, and one of us wellbeing practitioners will be in touch with you and yeah, hopefully, hopefully provide you with some help and support. Anyway, thank you. Bye bye. Amazing. Hi. Oh, <laughs> that's great, Ben. Thank you. Okay, so our next one then is um, from from medical practice. Our next clip is from Bryce, who's a mental health nurse practitioner. Um, she's going to be talking about what support young people can access from the practice here in Froome. Hi. My name is Bryce Morgan and I'm a mental health nurse practitioner at Free Medical Practice. A Free Medical Practice is a very unique surgery and it has a team of dedicated mental health nurse practitioners that you can book an appointment with. These appointments are bookable in advance, so you can ring the surgery and speak to a care navigator and book an appointment at a convenient day and time for you. 
Now, at the moment, our, our surgeries are being run over the phone. So when you book this appointment, you will initially get a phone call from one of the mental health practitioners at the practice. In this first appointment, we like to spend some time getting to know you and getting to know your concerns. So you can talk to us about what's been happening in your life recently and how you might be feeling and what concerns you may have about your mental health. Together, we like to think about different things that might help. So you might come to the appointment with ideas about what might help or you might just want to explore that together and that's okay. So we're happy to think with you about what is going on at the moment, what sort of things might be contributing to your mental health, what might be making things worse and what might be making things better and how can we begin to improve your mental health. Now this could vary from, this could be different for everybody. So it might be that we talk about small day-to-day -day changes that you can make that may improve your mental health. And then we can book in some follow-up appointments to check in, see how you're doing and see if it's any help. Or it could be from involving extra services. So we could look at counselling, therapies, or even getting to kind of specialist assessments if that's what's needed. So these appointments are a good space to have a think about what will help you and how we might be able to achieve your goals of improving your mental health. Through medical practice really recognises the importance of mental health and wellbeing in maintaining our overall health. So as a practice, they've made sure to prioritise mental health through providing these specific mental health consultations, as well as access to resources and information about mental health and how you can seek support or begin to improve things. Last year specifically, we have become very aware of how the lockdown and pandemic has been impacting our mental health. This is in particular, particularly in relation to young people, as we have noticed young people are feeling much more isolated, they're lacking routine, they're feeling low, anxious and much more stressed and worried about their future. So as a mental health team, we really wanted to reach out to these young people and give them a space to know that they're not alone in how they're feeling and give them effective ways of understanding and managing the stress and worry related to COVID and useful tips overall in managing your mental health. So as you may be aware, in February, we ran three successful online education sessions for young people. These sessions focused on understanding our body's normal responses to stress and fear and thinking about ways that we could manage this more effectively. We also looked at how to deal with uncertainty, um, specifically in relation to the news and social media, where we may be exposed to a lot more uncertainty and fear, which could be damaging to our mental health. And we also looked at how we can manage and maintain our relationships in lockdown. Now, these sessions were really good and they were really well received. However, the main piece of feedback that we received was that lots of young people felt a relief to hear that they were not the only one feeling that way. So this is really important in understanding that having these conversations about mental health can help young people to feel less alone. We can begin to normalise our emotional response to certain situations and think about effective ways to manage this. Amazing, some really important things uh, said there from Bryce. You can have the next slide, please. Amazing. OK, so our next uh, slide is from SWEDA, which is Somerset and Wessex Eating Disorders Association. Now, SWEDA provides support to anyone affected by eating disorders, including anorexia, bulimia, compulsive eating, binge eating disorder and all related conditions. Um, here's Sarah from SWEDA talking a little bit more about what SWEDA can offer young people locally. people whose lives are affected by eating disorders. Hello, my name is Sarah and I'm a therapist who works for Sweden, which is a charity that supports people whose lives are affected by eating disorders and body image issues of any description. Now, during this particularly difficult time of life, we're recognising that the coping strategies that you usually use might not be available to you. 
And you might find yourself getting more anxious, more stressful. You might find that you're restricting the food intake or wanting to eat more than you would normally do, which could also then spiral out of feelings of being out of control. So what I'd like to do is offer you that support. You can self-refer via our website. We offer telephone consultations, support sessions that last for about half an hour. They can be rolling over from weekly or, or fortnightly half hour check-ins via the phone. We can also offer virtual counseling sessions. There's also a virtual online group. We've set up a helpline and a chat line. So there are lots of forums where, which you can access for support. Now, as a charity, we very much believe in the individual finding their own way through recovery. So we don't weigh, we don't measure, we don't give food plans, because we recognize that you are unique in your own right and your journey of recovery is yours alone. So please do reach out for support because we are here to help you. Fantastic. Okay, so if I can have the next slide, please. Okay, so our next fantastic clip is from the team at Cooth, talking about who can use the service and what you can find on their website. Hi everyone, my name's Lauren and I work for Cooth. Cooth is an online emotional wellbeing support service for young people in Somerset aged 11 right up to your 19th birthday. It's free, it's safe and it's anonymous. You can sign up to Cooth on any web enabled device on www.cooth.com. Here is a quick overview video to tell you a little bit more about Cooth. Welcome to Coof, a free, safe and anonymous place for young people to find online support and counselling. There's a bunch of features and tools to support you if you're looking for advice or simply aren't feeling your best. Coof Magazine, a place full of opinions, creative pieces and personal experiences written by young people. Express yourself and help others along the way. Try writing a short story, an informative article or write about your own interests and experiences. You'd be surprised how good it can feel to contribute and you'll be helping others too. Coof Discussion Boards. Here you can start or join a conversation on all sorts of things from anxiety and relationship advice to tips for relaxing after a stressful day. Coof Goals. This useful tool can help you set smart personal goals and track the progress you make towards achieving them. Coof Journal. Like a personal diary, your Coof journal will help you track how your mood changes as a result of things that happen throughout the week. This can help you identify behaviours or events that tend to make you feel good, as well as those that make you feel less positive. And Coof chat and messenger, for when you want to talk to Coof's friendly online team about anything that might be bothering you. At Coof, there's always somebody who will listen and understand. So as you can see from that video, there's lots and lots of things to do on Cooth. It's really easy to sign up. All you need to do is head over to the website at www.cooth.com and click join Cooth. You answer a few simple questions and then once you've logged on, you can access Cooth as and when you need that extra bit of support. The magazine has some great content to read through. There's the forums where you can give and receive support from other young people all over the UK that use Cooth anonymously. You can take part and do some of our mini activities, which are great to support your own mental health and well-being. Or you can speak to one of our qualified counsellors. So whatever support you need, Cooth is there for you. Thanks for listening. Amazing, uh, great stuff there from Lauren. If I can have the next slide, amazing, thank you. Um, so this is from Somerset County Council, Emotional Health and Wellbeing Children and Young People's Team. So this, in this clip, Joe from the team is gonna talk through how to navigate to the parent toolkits online, where you can find loads of great links and resources.
Hello, I'm Jo and I work in Somerset County Council Public Health Children and Young People's team. And I'd like to take a few moments to show you around our website. The website's available to support schools, colleges, early year settings, or anyone that works with or cares for children and young people to help improve health and well-being of children and young people and families in Somerset. And it includes here the Somerset Wellbeing Framework, which is our local programme for delivering a whole school approach to mental health and wellbeing within schools and colleges. And it allows these settings to record their health and wellbeing work. Now, as you will see across the banner at the top here, which at the moment is in blue, there's a home button available. Now, this banner remains no matter what page you're on, but it may change colour. But the buttons here will all remain the same. So this means that you're always able to return back to the home page through here. Now, along here also, you may notice the bulletins section. And throughout the first lockdown, we developed regular bulletins, which offer some hints and tips and ideas for supporting well-being for families and within schools or children and young people. And these are available for anyone to access here. I'd like now to share with you a couple of areas which I think would be of most support and of use for you as parent carers and families. So here you'll see we've got the parent carer toolkit and this holds a whole wealth of supportive information, advice and guidance that's been put together um, with the support of parents carers to make sure that it holds content that's of most use and is suitable for families. In here we've identified some of the most common topics that affect families and we've linked these to recommended web-based information and local support. So I'm just going to draw your attention to this tile. Um, you may call these whatever you choose but we're just going to call them tiles for now. I'm not sure if that's a technical term. And within here you'll see down the side that there are different areas that you may choose to go into in more detail. And most of the pages look like this. Now, remember, you can return to home through the top banner. And I'm going to draw your attention now to another toolkit we have available, which is the mental health toolkit. And this area of our website um, provides support and information about mental health and emotional health and well-being. Now, some tiles may take you directly onto a resource like this one, for example. And here you'll be able to access straight away the resources available. Or some, say this one, may take you to, like we saw in the parent carer section, further options that you can take a look at. So I'm sure you appreciate there's a whole wealth of information available for you to help support. And I hope now that you have found this guide to be of use. I know how difficult it can be when faced with, with all of this information and knowing where to get started. So I mentioned the Somerset Wellbeing Framework at the start, and this is mainly an area that is likely to be accessed for schools, colleges or children and young people's workers. But everywhere on our website is open and available, apart from the audit tool. And that's simply because um, unless you're a school working on wanting to identify uh, needs and strengths in your setting, it simply doesn't need to be available to everyone. 
So you'll see at the top, there's a place here where you can register or sign in. And as families, parents, carers or children, young people, you really don't need to register or sign in. Everything will just be available. There's a lot of resources um, on the site and do feel free to spend a little time having a look around. If there's something in particular that you're looking for, we do have two options for a search and you can just type in here. You'll see a few things come up already. So, for example, sleep. That's purely because I've looked into that before. You can just type it in or click on something you've already looked at and click search and this will give you some of the options that are available that relate to your topic of search. So as I said I hope this has been useful for you and do have a look around like I said it's all available for you there's nothing hidden here um, but I do think the parent carer toolkit and the mental health toolkit and you may find some of the coronavirus information um, also with use at the moment. So thank you for your time. Amazing. Lots and lots of information on there. OK, so our next video then is a uh, clip is from Danny from LifeBeat, talking a little bit more about LifeBeat and the work that they do with young people. Hi there, my name is Danny Baller. I'm Programme and Trainings Lead at LifeBeat, and we're a youth charity that works to enhance the mental health and well-being of young people. And primarily we do that through our experiential programmes. We run summer camps, well-being residentials, and throughout the pandemic we've been running creative workshops and programmes online to support young people in this difficult time. We work with the powers of creativity and community, and we've been really lucky over the last three years to work alongside public health to deliver trainings to enhance their well-being framework. So we've trained teachers, senior leadership teams, governors, and people from organizations outside of schools that support young people. And it's been a real pleasure to meet some of those young people on our programs. Some young people from Froome have been on our programs. I can remember a particular group on our summer camp of 2019 and they were pretty gutted, as were we, that last year we had to pull that for obvious reasons. But fingers crossed this year, if things keep unfolding well, they'll be back. So we we're looking forward to welcoming them and back on the programmes. And if you're between 14 and 18 years old, uh, then maybe we'll meet you there too. We're particularly looking forward to working with some of the schools in Froome as well to help more young people access the work that we do and to enhance their well-being and really work out what it means for us to thrive and be well. So go to www.lifebeat.co.uk and look out for the announcements. But until then, stay safe and we'll see you soon. Bye. Amazing. Great stuff there from Danny and excited to have Lifebeat uh, with us in Froome as well. OK, so our last uh, clip then is from our local school nursing team. Now, the Froome School Nurse Team consists of two school nurses and one school nursing assistant. They are here to help promote and support children aged 5 to 19 live safe and healthy lives, and they can help with a number of different things. It's also worth recognising that they have a Chat Health Service, which is a new initiative which was launched in 2020. It's a nationally recognised, secure and confidential text messaging service for young people that allows them to access health for sorry, healthcare professionals easily and anonymously for advice and support. Um, the service is also available for parents on a separate line. Um, and as I mentioned before, we'll give you all the details for all of the services um, that we've uh, seen clips from today um, after the session. But this clip that we're gonna watch now has been created for a local school to help the students know what their school nurse team can offer.
Fantastic. Okay, so that is the end of our video part of the session. I hope you've enjoyed um, hearing um, from a range of different services that we have working in Froom. Um, and I know I keep saying it, but please do remember that all the information about how to access those services and lots of other services as well um, are going to be available after the session. Um, can I welcome Ben back for the next part of the session? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so together we're going to go through some practical hints and tips that our professionals have put together um, to get those conversations started. Um, and again, these will also be available in more detail on our webpage after the session today. Okay, so um, hint number one then. Setting can be really important. Um, so having a think about this before you start that conversation or, or get ready for that conversation. So thinking about maybe going for a walk or doing an activity together can be a really, uh, a really good way of finding a safe place to start talking. You know, the, where the focus is not directly on them and there are other things going on as well. So if you know a place they love to go or feel safe in or an activity that they really enjoy, this can help get that started. So sometimes just having something to do with your hands can take the pressure off starting that conversation about how you're feeling or um, emotions. Um, and if it's possible, give them a choice of where to go or what to do, because this will help them feel um, some control over the situation. So I'm going to pass over to Ben for hint and tip number two. Thanks, Melody. Um, so the second tip is actually my tip, um, which is talking in the car, but um, it's a little bit more than just talking in the car. The idea here is that by having a conversation in a car, like Melody said with the settings, it can sometimes be a much easier way to hold a conversation because you're not facing each other direct on, there's no need for eye contact, you can just be side by side and a lot of people find it easier to open up and talk that way if they don't have to face to face people. So that would be my one of my tips. I've had plenty of really interesting and in-depth conversations just driving around with young people and I don't know what it is about being in a car but they, they just seem to to, yeah divulge more information to me that way so that would be my first tip thanks no Melanie. thank you um okay can i hand yeah number three perfect um so limit distractions so um i know this is not always easy but if you know that you may have other people or other siblings coming into the space that you're in and that you, you, you're talking in um disturbing you it might be best to plan a place or a time where this won't happen. Now, I know that's hard, uh, parent myself, so finding time is, is, is tricky, but by giving them your full attention, you're showing them that, that they're important and that you have time to talk. Um, also limiting other distractions like music, TV um, or games um, can also help. Okay, I'm going to pass you on number four to Ben. Okay, so yes, the fourth one is using open questions. So one of the things that I would encourage parents and carers and everyone to do is to use open questions. Um, the tips come from someone else, but I, I really support this one. It can be as simple as just asking, how are you? You know, and letting the young person say what they want to say instead of putting kind of pressure with focus questions about, you know, specific things. Use just open questions, find out more about them. You know, it might be the case that you're you're talking to a young person that you don't have a have a kind of pre-existing relationship with in, in opening with conversation about getting to know them can make them feel a lot easier about what co might come next in that conversation. So yes, back to you, Melody. Amazing. Okay, so number five, show them that you're listening to them. Now this may seem a little bit of a silly one, but actually with open body posture by being relaxed and with eye contact, if it's appropriate, um, what you're doing is you're showing them that you are properly listening to them. Um, Again, it might seem a bit silly, but even just nodding your head, uh, smiling, or asking um, some simple questions, like Ben said, about what they're talking about, just shows them that you're actively listening to them. Um, and what that's doing is showing them that you, you're, you, know, you care, um, and also helping them feel safe in, in that conversation. Perfect, I'm gonna send it back to you, Ben. Thanks, Melody. Um, so yeah, regular family check-ins. Um, so what we're talking about here is setting up uh, a kind of specific time where you and the family can all have a check-in as such. So it's it's not just about the focus of the one young individual. It's about, you know, having a check-in with the whole family. So this could be done over dinner um, and using the daily check-in tool, which Melody's going to explain a little bit more about in a minute. So 
by doing this, it helps the children and young people to see that everyone needs to look after their mental health, not just them. And if this becomes routine for them, they will start to see this as a normal family activity with no stigma or pressure attached to it. So, Melody, did you want to explain a little bit more about the next part? Is that OK? Yeah, Thank you. Um, so this is an example of a daily check in activity. Um, it's not the only one out there. There are other ones, too. But this one uh, we've put together because I feel like um, it works really, really well. I've seen it work brilliantly with other parents and with schools that I've worked with previously. I also use it as a family as well. It is stuck on my fridge um, so that every time we walk past, um, we're all thinking about this. Now, the idea behind this one is there are 10 things here that you can do in a day that can help your mental health. Now, these are really simple things like eating well, asking for help, talking um, to other people, um, but actually sometimes these are the things that we forget to do in a day. Um, and the idea being is that whether it's over dinner or in the evening or just one on one with someone if you wanted to, you could go through these 10 and see how you did in a day. Um, in the, not the, the idea is not to try and get all 10, that's really hard and I had to put my hands up and say that would be difficult for me to do um, even, but what this can do is just to you know, highlight some of the things that people do really well about looking after their mental health, but also maybe some of the areas where they're not so good at it and things that maybe they can work on and work on with you together. It is really important that you do this with your children and young people and um, because it's nice for them to be able to see that actually sometimes as adults, we're not always that good at looking after ourselves as well. Now, I have to admit the one that I'm not that good at doing is drinking more water and I have to make a real effort to make sure there are water bottles and that people remind me to drink water because I do know that if I don't, it does uh, make me feel worse and I get a headache kind of by the end of the day. So the idea behind this is it's a nice, colourful, simple way of checking in and seeing how we're doing on our mental health and can be a really good beginning starter um, if you're recognising that actually one of them, a child or young person, really struggles with. So it's something that you guys can all work together to try and get better at. Another thing, um, another kind of hint or tip that I'm going to add in just here, if I'm able to, is one for maybe younger children. Um, so trying to start a conversation after school can be a real headache. I know that I ask regularly, you know, what did you do at school? And I quite often get uh, nothing or it was boring or just a grunt. That was generally uh, what was happening in my house. Um, so I, was, I borrowed a, a, a technique from a colleague of mine who um, has introduced the idea that you could ask specific questions after school that will help them um, get used to this idea of having a kind of chat about what, what's gone on in their day. So the kind of things that we do now is um, maybe like one silly thing that happened in the day, uh, or one funny thing, um, maybe one yummy thing that they ate. Um, and one thing that maybe they're proud of. And the idea being is that you, you say these things every day um, after school so that they get used to it, so it becomes a bit of a routine. And actually they quite like it because it's a little bit silly, it's a little bit funny, you know, they think of things that's happened in the day that they can come back and say um, for, your, you know, for your one thing after school. Um, and what I found is after a few weeks, we could introduce some, some slightly harder ones in. And so introducing something like, can you tell me one not so good thing that happened in your day? Um, it was a really good way of them very simply and easily being able to say, actually, do you know what, I fell out with someone or I didn't do as well as I wanted on my spellings. And if you wanted to, you could just leave it there. It could just be the one thing. But if they also wanted to, that could be a really good opener for a bit more of a conversation about what was going on that day and maybe what they were going to do differently the next day. And, and just kind of opening up thinking about um, what was happening after school. And I have to say, it's made a massive, massive difference. Um, but it's also, again, really important that if you're going to ask them for the one thing, that you're also ready with something as well. So uh, having to think of the one thing that you're proud of as well in the day is really lovely for them to be able to see that actually there's things that we do, even if they're little things as adults, that we're also really proud of doing during the day. So I am going to send you on to next one over to Ben for number seven. Hello. Um, so role modelling is the next tip. Um, so what do we mean by role modelling? Um, like role modelling is, is one of the most fundamentally important things, I think, in talking to young people. So um, if a child or young person sees you as an adult feeling able to talk about how you feel, maybe when you are scared, happy or not feeling great, this can help them to see that everyone has these feelings. This can be a great opener for you to talk about how you react when you are feeling these emotions and also how you look after yourself if you are not feeling so good. 
I think one of the experiences I have within my work and my role in talking about role modeling is, is I share my experiences with how I might have felt with anxiety about normal situations. You'll be amazed how many young people feel like they think that they're the only person in the world that is feeling like this. Mm -hmm. And actually having an adult and, but you know, a parent talking about how they, their experiences, things that make them anxious or unhappy or sad really helps to normalize these things. And I think normalizing is, is again, really important part of role modeling is to make young people understand that talking about mental health and what's troubling them is really important and if you as adults and parents and carers can do that then that's that's the first step really in encouraging young people to be able to do it themselves as well so yeah role modeling massively important amazing thank you okay so our last tip uh, from our hints and tips section then is about self-care and I think that follows on beautifully from the role modeling because actually it's not just self-care for them, it's self-care for you as well. Because looking after you is really, really important. Making sure that you are looking after your own well-being, not just showcases to them how important uh, self-care is, but also helps you get in the right frame of mind for talking to them about mental health or about you know things that are troubling them. Um, now, everybody's idea of self-care is different. It could be going for a walk, taking a bath, talking to some friends. Um, but actually, by showcasing to them the things that work for you, um, you're also going to help them find out things that might help them. Um, now, there are tons of activities out there and tools, whether it's mindfulness, or all sorts of other things that can help um, around self-care for not being so good. Um, example, on the Keith website uh, earlier, they talked about some mini activities that young people can do for themselves or maybe even do with you if you wanted. But actually thinking about those things that help us feel good or help us uh, relax if we've had a bit of a worrying day or a bit of a stressful day are really, really important and talking about them with the children and people. Now, it's quite likely that they will have different things that work for them, but actually by exploring that, um, you know, as early as possible, actually what we're doing is we're giving them tools to be able to take some ownership over, um, you know, how they feel and how to help themselves feel a bit better. So if they know that actually, um, you know, giving the dog a cuddle or, um, I don't know, going for a stomp or listening to some music is the thing that works for them. Actually, what we're doing is we're helping them understand that when they haven't had such a good day, there are things out there that can help. Now, I'm really happy to share my uh, example of the thing that I do uh, for my self-care. So uh, when I'm having a little bit of a stressful day, the thing that I do is I go into my kitchen and I turn my music up really, really loud and I have a bit of a dance, uh, much to the disgust of my children who are quite embarrassed by it, I'm sure. Um, but I absolutely love putting my music up full volume and, and it just helps me um, kind of lose all those feelings of, of stress that I might have picked up in the day. I was also told uh, by a therapist co uh, colleague at one point that when you turn music up, particularly music that you love up really, really loud, it helps your body um, kind of release some happy chemicals. So that's always been my excuse for having my music up very, very loud. Now, I completely understand if that is not the tip that you're taking home for your children, young people tonight, because you might not want uh, your loud music, you know, blaring out from different rooms in the house. But I was kind of just wanting to showcase that everybody has something different that works for them. And actually, if as adults, we've worked out what works for us, um, what we can do is just say, oh, you know, this, this is what works for me. Let's find out what works for you. So making sure you look after yourself uh, and each other is really, really important. Fantastic. So what I'm hoping for now is we've got uh, 10 or so minutes before the end of the session today that Kate, maybe you would be able to come back to us. Amazing. Um, and see if there were any questions from the Q&A board or themes that you saw in the session today um, that might be useful for us to share whilst we've got a few minutes at the end. Hi. Um, yeah, so broadly, uh, people are asking what support is available for 10 year olds. Um, and I guess that would be through, um, well, I'll hand it over to you, Ben, probably that, that question. 
Yes. Um, so it's similar to another question that I answered in the Q&A there. So um, my work specifically, well, typically I would only work with children over the age of 12 in a one to one session. So I would only work with children over the age of 12, typically um, in that one to one scenario. Anything for children under the age of 12, our work would be done with the parents directly. Um, and that would be done with the parents as almost like a co-therapist. So I would act as a kind of a guide and a guru to say, OK, these are the strategies that we could try and implement within the home um, and, you know, within within, you know, social opportunities and situations. So young Somerset, personally, we don't really work with children under the age of, of 12. Um, that's not a hard and fast rule. I mean, some young children are capable and able of taking on the CBT therapy um, at a younger age. But typically we don't work with um, children one to one under the age of 12. Like I say, that'll be done with parents. Um, but there are lots of um, other things that are available out there um, for kind of like counselling services and such. So, yeah, Family Counselling Trust would be a really good one that I would recommend. They work within Somerset as well. And they tend to work more directly with the younger children and families as well. So, yes, I hope that kind of answers it. I'm yeah, if I, if I can just jump in there as well, Ben, I know that the... Um, the public health uh, nursing team also work with um, younger ones and families, so it would be good to have a look at the information that we're going to give about um, those guys, because um, their reach is to a slightly younger age group as well, um, and can look uh, around uh, mental health and well-being as part of their, um, their reach, um, so that might be helpful too. And just as the final, uh, I guess, a, a kind of central protocol for everybody is MindLine. And um, they can direct you according to the specific support that you might require for, for your young person. Yeah, and also um, highlight if there are other services that they would um, recommend that you get in touch with. And they can support you with getting in touch with those services too as well. So, yeah, absolutely. If you're worried at all about a younger one, I would definitely go straight to mind line and have a chat with the amazing guys on there. Um, there's a question here about uh, the organisations that we've featured today are absolutely Somerset based. Um, and do we know if they also have teams in other counties? Melody, I'll let you answer that one. Okay, um, I think some of them do and some of them don't. Obviously, um, things like uh, the, the county council ones, there'll be different uh, county council offers in different areas. Um, and obviously the public health nursing team, they do vary depending on the area that they're working in as well. What we've tried to do today is to kind of bring together all the things that work for Froom um, so that um, we get a real kind of local uh, look at what's going on. Um, but there are definitely diff some of them that will work in the other areas as well. But yeah, we were really kind of focusing on trying to bring together kind of Somerset based ones, ones that would be local uh, offers. For children and young people here but remember that the services that we have here are not the only services that are on offer in Froome or in Somerset or beyond uh, our borders we have um, a huge huge list and range of services and all the information about them on the web page um, I think it works out at about six pages long list of stuff that is local and is national um, and has all sorts of links to websites and phone lines and other support services um, which work in kind of much more focused different areas uh, around mental health and well-being as well so please do look on the website afterwards because there is just a massive amount of information on there um, and hopefully you'll be able to find something that fits uh, with the questions that you have. Um, the next one is is really a comment and really useful for all of us so I'll, I'll just I'll um, just summarize it really it's about thinking about self-care as much more than just treating ourselves so thinking about the things that we've achieved, recognizing uh, what we've done in a day or, or a week and, and what we can do and, and how what that enables us to feel like at the end of it. Um, so this kind of successes, I guess that's a bit like having your, your list and a couple of things that you can tick off at the beginning of the list. So you start to feel um, good and positive about those things and can see progression. Um, and then the final one was very specific around food and, and eating for older young people. So for a 17 year old and um, Melody, do you have any recommendations of, of where to head? 
Yes, so I think um, the team that we spoke about earlier, and you saw a video from Sarah um, from Sweden, um, they are absolutely amazing with anything to do with um, eating queries and questions about food. Um, and they would be my first point of call um, if you did have a worry about a, a young person and the way that they were thinking about food or their body. Um, it's also really uh, useful to note that they have a mindline uh, time so my line and Sweden are also working together in partnerships so that there is a phone line time, a particular time frame uh, where the Sweden team are on the line as well, so that they are there to support around thinking about eating disorders and things like that as well. So um, it might be that that's a really good place to start um, to ring up uh, that free phone number so that you can ask those particular questions. But yeah, they are brilliant and I'm really happy to help. And Melody, um, just as an aside, many of the organisations that you feature today, people can access directly themselves rather than going through a GP to, for a referral, can't they? Yes, yeah, and that's really important. And one of the reasons why we've got all of the links uh, on their afterwards websites as well, so that you can have a look in more detail. Uh, yeah, lots of them have either a kind of text service, a free phone line service, or, um, you know, like Cooth is an online service that you can access without having to need a referral. And Ben, um, can people access you without going through the school? Do they need to go through the school to access your service? How does it work? Um, well, yeah, we have lots of lots of routes into our service. Um, again, I'd just like to add on that we we also are part of Mindline as well. So if there are general queries, um, we have wellbeing practitioners available through Mindline between nine and 10 in the evening. So um, yeah, if there are any queries that you go through Mindline and it seems appropriate, they will transfer you over to Young Somerset so we can talk to you through there. But ideally our, our service is, is we, what we would really like is for young people to be the ones to make that decision to request for support. So um, on our website, we have our, on, on our wellbeing section. So I, I should have brought it up today and, and been able to show people. But um, if you navigate through our website and through the wellbeing services, there's an option for professionals to refer, schools to refer, um, and, and pair, um, sorry, students and young people to refer. So one thing I would like to just kind of really add on to that is with the model of work we do with CBT, the young people really have to have a level of motivation and want to change. It's not a form of therapy that can be put onto people. It really has to be something that young people want to access and want to make the change. So that's ideally in an ideal world, we would like all of our requests for support to come through from the young people after they've been informed about what the service is so but yeah I mean anyone can request a request of support from us so parents professionals young people so yes I hope that answers it brilliant and then the final question is do we know anything about play therapy play therapy services that are available to to children and young people in and around free melody um, so it's not one that we've brought up in this one, but actually, interestingly, um, going to be uh, play is going to be the topic of my next community training uh, session that I'm going to be doing in June. Um, but um, off the top of my head, I don't have someone to name now, but we do have links with people that work um, across Somerset. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in thinking a little bit more about play from a therapeutic point of view, or just because you're interested in finding out what we're getting up to um, around play uh, and our play strategy that we're launching, um, I will be doing another session um, like this, either online or in person, if we're able to, uh, in June, that's going to look at that in more detail. And I guess, um, finally, there are just to summarise, there are lots of thanks here and thanks for, for sharing information and people sort of maybe not knowing that so much was available out there. But um, Melody, you'll be sending out information in the next couple of days. We'll be able to, to, to look and see if we can put some links, particularly around play therapy and some of the other questions into that information and make sure it's all covered. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll go through the questions and make sure that we've got uh, all the right links that we need to. And as I've said multiple times during the session today, everything um, that we talk about is going to be on our web page, but also for anyone that's joined up, and signed up to be part of uh, the session today, we will send you not only a copy of uh, the recording of the session, but also all of the links that we talked about. And the hints and tips that we spoke about are on, uh, on our website too, as well as the daily check-in tool um, and some other resources as well. Um, so yeah, everything should be available on there um, after the session. Can I just ask you a quick question, Melody? Would you recommend that those little films are good for young people to watch themselves? 
Absolutely. Yeah, my hope was that um, by having them recorded rather than bringing people in just for the session, um, although it would have been lovely to have them, that those video clips could then be um, used on our website. And if a family member kind of thought, actually, do you know, it'd be really great if someone wanted to know a bit more about Coos or my young person wanted to, that they would be able to log on with them or on their own and they'd be able to go onto our website and just play those clips individually. So they might not want to see everybody's one, but they might be one particular one that they want a little bit more information on. Um, so yeah, hopefully that will be useful uh, for the young people as well. Amazing. Um, and Thanks. just kind of bring back to, uh, what Kate uh, said about, um, you know, feeling positive and feeling proud. I think it's really, really important that, um, you know, we all uh, find uh, something that we're proud of. And when we're talking to our children and people about mental health and asking them for things that they're proud of, that we've got something in there too that we can join in with as well. Um, you know, I think that's, that's a real key to being able to open up those uh, those conversations is to be able to kind of say, actually, do you know what, we're all in this together. Um, and I think that's really, really important. Um, does anyone else want to say anything just before we finish? If not, um, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, everyone, as well. Cheers. <laughs>